the biggest problem I see with people, they get these long, leggy plants. They, they always ask them, what's wrong with my plants? They got them sitting in a south window or an east window in their house. And they say, what, what's wrong with my plants? And they're like uh, eight inches tall and they're about ready to fall over. And uh, they, they don't know what's going on. So we're going to fix that problem. They're really strong. You can't, you can't hurt these things. I don't do that anymore. I used to do that. But I like a different way. It seemed like it got things too wet. Here's another little money saving tip is these are just made out of these little vinyl blinds you buy for your house. I'll take a, a block of wood. It gives more resistance to that seed coming up and it helps peel that seed covering off. This one does not have automatic shut off. That's what you want. So that's why I always use a thermostat. Poke it right in there like that. So it makes it really nice. You don't have to worry about it. This is my other germination chamber. This is my favorite one. You really have the roots warm and then the top cool. You know, you go to the store and you, you see the pony packs and the plants are maybe six, eight inches tall. That's mm -hmm. way too big for a, a, a tomato plant in a pony pack. If you leave them in there longer, they're going to be root bound and it's going to, it's going to hinder their production down the road. And so it works good Ooh. if you're like in a shop or garage where it's cool in there. You don't really keep that warm. Those need to be repotted. Welcome back to our channel where we like to share with you organic gardening tips, woodworking, and homesteading tips. This time we got a video for you on how to start your seeds. So we're going to go over how to plant them in the little pony packs. Also, we're going to talk about the heat mats, but especially we're going to talk about... Lighting. Lighting. Why? Well, lighting is probably the biggest thing I see people falling short on understanding. And uh, so we're going to try to cover that and make it a little simpler for you to be able to grow good seedlings for your garden. Makes a huge difference. All right, well, let's get to it. The most important thing of this whole video is the lighting. And we really want to cover that better in more detail in just a little bit. But first we're gonna go over planting the seeds, what's involved in getting the seeds actually in the dirt and get them started on their germination. So what we use is, these are just a standard 1020 tray. They're called 1020. That means they're 10 inches wide, 20 inches long. And I really like the ones from like a greenhouse mega store and get this extra heavy duty ones. They're really strong. You can't, you can't hurt these things. Uh, they show actually two guys lifting a guy that's standing in this thing, lifting them up. And that's how sturdy oh, wow. it is. So anyway, they'll last for last forever. So just spend your money wisely and, and uh, get some really good ones to start with. The other cheap ones you buy at the big box store, they usually get holes right in the corners and then you start leaking. And I always use the ones without the drainage holes for what I'm doing today. So, and then you get the little, uh, uh, little pony packs. They come in a kind of a, just a deal like this and all attached together. So I always, take them apart before I start because if you don't then you're trying to take them apart and you got plants growing in there and it's, it's a lot harder to do. So you just break them apart. They're just barely attached when they mold them. So just pull them apart and put them in your tray, your 1020 tray. And there you have the basics there. And then you can go back, go back and refer to our previous, another video we made on how to make this uh, uh, seed starting soil mix and uh, learn how to save yourself a lot of money just making your own. So I just do it really easy like, and they don't get carried away with being real neat and tidy. So I just scoop this stuff up and put it in here. And make sure they're all kind of filled it nice and full. I kind of just drag it over. The corners are usually the, the hardest part to get nicely full. You want them all the same fullness. So just kind of smooth it out the best like that. And this dust band works pretty good for this kind of a thing. So there you have it. And just kind of tap it down like that a little bit, settle it in. Okay, yeah. ready for planting seeds. And so let's say you're doing tomato seeds. And so we just get the tomatoes 
This is actually called Rebel Yale Tomato. Um, and I get quite a few seeds from delectation of toma tomatoes. Um, he is a very good seed supplier. He's got like over 3,000 varieties. And the packets are only like $2.40 or something. They're really reasonable. And he's a really nice guy and very helpful. If you have any questions, I'm sure he'll answer them for you. But he's a great seed supplier. And he come in a little wax paper deal like this. And so I just put a few in my hand. And I, I usually put two seeds in each one of these cells. And that way, if one doesn't come up, you've got a second chance to get so you have a complete, you know, 100% germination cover, uh, fill tray. So just do that to all the, the cells, put all your tomato seeds in there, and uh, then we'll, what I do next is I just take a little bit of the same seed starting mix, and I just sprinkle it over the top of it, just a little layer on top, just like that. And then I will use some perlite, I mean vermiculite, to uh, put on top of that. It just helps hold the moisture in a little bit. And uh, so I just take some perlite, the fine stuff. Don't get the coarse stuff. Just sprinkle that over the top of that like that. You mean that's vermiculite? Yeah. Vermiculite. Mm -hmm. And uh, now sometimes people will just take one of these out and they'll pour a bunch of water in here and soak it up from the bottom. I don't do that anymore. I used to do that. But I like a different way. It seemed like it got things too wet. By the time it got to the top, the thing's just totally saturated. And it's too wet. So now what I do is I just take a little pump sprayer and pump it up and just water from the top. And I usually use warm water because the uh, peat moss will absorb the warm water quicker and more efficiently than cold water since dry peat moss is kind of hydrophobic. It doesn't want to absorb the water. So I just so warm do it like that, better. let it sit for a little bit, do something else, come back and hit it again with water. And you can kind of feel by the weight of the tray uh, when you with a little bit of experience, you'll know how much to put on there. But it doesn't take a lot of a lot of water. So is it supposed to be it's supposed to leak out the bottom when it's full? No, I don't really want it to go clear down to the bottom and leak out. That's a little mm -hmm. too much. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be putting a dome over this, and that keeps it, you know, the humidity in there, and so you don't mm -hmm. really have to worry about having it just totally saturated with water. It's just the top layer that you really need to have moisture in it. Mm -hmm. Seeds don't take much moisture to germinate, so you just water these guys in. And then don't forget to uh, put a label uh, because if you do a few pony packs and you forget, you won't know which one's which. So you don't want to do that. This is Rebel Yell. And here's another little money saving tip is these are just made out of these little vinyl blinds you buy for your house. You can get these at the Goodwill or, you know, secondhand stores. And then I just take the whole blind and I chop it with a chop saw and to make a whole bunch of plant markers. It doesn't cost hardly a, a thing. So you just stick that in there like that and you've got your label. All right. So it makes very cheap plant markers. Um, you can't go wrong with doing that. Mm-hmm. And so once you get it all properly watered, I think this is just about good enough for this tray, this little pony pack here. I, just, I like the water until you kind of see the water just kind of puddling up on top where it's almost ready to run over the side. Mm -hmm. And then that's good enough. So then the next step, 
you got to keep the humidity in there. So you can use, I like to use the tall, tall domes. They're made out of better plastic. This is like polycarbonate, whereas this is just like acrylic. And they, they won't last very long. These, I've had some of these for years. And plus, if you have taller plant markers, those short ones don't work. Mm -hmm. So this works good. These new ones have vent holes here. You can turn, open up for ventilation. They have vents at the top. So they're, they're very nice dome. Mm -hmm. And I got these from the greenhouse mega store as well. Uh, so that, that works good like that. So if you try to do this with, with this thing, you know, it just it hits that plant marker. It doesn't go. It just doesn't work as nice. So that's why I like the taller ones. If you're short on space, just use shorter markers and then use the, sh the shorter dome. So that's basically it. I sometimes I'll take a, a block of wood and I'll just kind of push this down after I've watered it. I've kind of made this just the size of the cell. Just so we got really good contact with the soil and the seed. So there's no air pockets around the seed. And I also think it maybe helps uh, when you get these helmet heads, they're called doing tomatoes. A lot of times the seed cover comes up out of the soil and uh, it doesn't want to come off. And so uh, you don't want to have those helmet heads. And I think if you push that down like that packet, it gives more resistance to that seed coming up and it helps peel that seed covering off. Mm. So... It's a good tip. That's, that's it for just getting the seeds into the soil, sorry. And then we can either put them in a warm room, like if you keep your house warm, you can just set them inside, or if you got a wood stove, you can set them on a table by the wood stove so you have a nice warm for a spot for them. Or what I do, I use a heat mat and... Uh, this is just a little small one just to show you what can be done for, you know, a small operation. This is just a regular heat mat, like for humans or people. Uh, you can buy them off of Amazon. Here's a box. You can see what it is. It's just, a, it's called a king size sunbeam. You want to get this particular one, and we can put a link down below for it because a lot of them shut off in two hours or four hours automatic shut off and you don't mm -hmm. want that this one does not have automatic shut off that's what you want because mm -hmm. you're going to be plugging it into the thermostat and uh, so here's this heat mat here's the con this is the plug for it so it's just heat mat like this you can tell this has been used quite a bit so i just Put it here. You can just put it on a shelf or table or whatever. It's this little thing I had made up. Plug it into the thermostat. This is the thermostat. You see the digital readout here? And so... 6.9 degrees or something? Yeah. So then you just take your, your tray and set it right on there. It's just the right size. Covers that up nice. And then... Yeah, heat mat. Yeah, this is the perfect size. So then, you know, those little cheap black uh, heat mats you, for plants you see for just a, a 10 20 tray you can see them on amazon they're really inexpensive but they don't have any thermostat they just go you plug them in and they just go whatever your room temperature is they'll go a certain degrees above that room temperature and that's it so you have no way of controlling it so that's why i always use a thermostat i never do it without a thermostat so this is the sensor for the thermostat and so what i do and I just put it in this vent at the top of the dome, lift this up a little bit, and stick it right into the soil. Of course, that's the uh, dry soil here. It's not going to want to stick in. Let's turn this around. All right. And uh, so we can get it into the wet, wetter soil. And uh, so you can just stick this right in the it's soil here. Hang on. Poke it right. Oops. Poke it right in there like that. And set it on. Make sure you get it on the heat mat good. And mm -hmm. now you can see it's showing 67. It's still adjusting to the cold temperature of that water. 
and yeah. that water. So it's 66.7. And I've got it set at 78 degrees mm -hmm. is when it's going to bring that. It's going to bring the soil to 78 yeah. degrees. Yeah. Now you got to also remember to turn, turn that on. Turn this on to high. High is what I do. Uh, it's only draws like 50 watts. Mm -hmm. So this thermostat controls this outlet right here. And so. uh, you can buy different kind of, lots of different thermostats off of Amazon. There's another one here, same thing. They got, you know, a uh, sensor. Oh yeah, sure and enough, a probe. You got two plugins. It's, you don't have to buy this fancy one. This is kind of more expensive one. And they also have- Maybe we'll stick a link for some of these more self-continuants so you don't have to uh, make something like this if you don't have Yeah, if you don't want to wire something. This takes a little bit of wiring. Yeah, so oh, there's another one. Here's another one. You can get one like, like this. Mm -hmm. And this is the sensor here. Plugs right into the side. Mm -hmm. And then there's, this is the kind that I use, like here. I That's what's inside the box. there. Yeah. Um, and then it just has contacts on the back. And these are all, all of these run about in between $20 and $30 on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And then I use this timer. This is a little cheap timer for the light. Is this is an um, analog? It's, yeah, it's, turn this, there's a light turn on. So it, um, and you can get lots of different kinds of digital timers, but I like just the manual one because it's so easy to change. You don't have to try to remember how to program the thing. <laughs> so for us old people. It's, 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 I didn't want to say that, Dad. It's just, it's just easier to turn the dial. <laughs> so He's old school. He's got to have a button. <laughs> so that's that's it. So you can turn, you know, your, your peppers are going to want warmer soil. You can probably crank those up to about 80 to 85 degrees. Uh, for your pepper seeds. Yeah, if you're trying to grow pumpkins, you can do those 80 to 85 as well. Uh, so you can just set your thermostat to whatever you, you know you need. If it's a cooler temperature germinating seed, just turn it down. So it makes it really nice. You don't have to worry about it. It just takes care of itself and just wait for the, the uh, plants start to poke up out of the ground. And as soon as it does, immediately turn the light on and start your cycle of your lighting, and that's 16 hours on, eight hours off usually. So you just make sure you got light on at the moment they can start peeking out of the soil. Don't wait for them to come up and get leaves or anything, just get them, you know, they barely see a little bit of green coming up. Uh -huh. So that's it for for the seed starting. Pretty simple. Um, and you know, this is just a small deal here. I've got a lot bigger ones. Uh, yeah, you want to show them? Yeah, I'll show you just real quick. Uh, but there's a one here. It's a, a heat mat there. There's four of them sitting on there. Oh, well, yeah, it's a little bit slightly overexposed, but... So with this camera kind of setup, it takes two four-foot tubes to two, cover. Oh, two four-foot tubes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're just doing kind of half of it right yeah, now. Yeah, this is half right now. It's, yeah. Nothing's up yet. I mm -hmm. just planted them. So there's two of these lights. Uh, hanging over this table. Mm -hmm. And it's got the same kind of thermostat and timer. Mm -hmm. And the sensor's going into the top here and down into the soil. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that one. This is my other germination chamber. This is my favorite one. It's an insulated, basically an insulated box. It's got insulation all around except for this window. And it keeps the, uh, the all the air in there at 80 degrees or whatever I set it at. Um, instead of just being underneath the heat mat, the, the, the 10 tray trays sitting on a heat mat, which doesn't give real even temperature. You'll get, you know, a couple of degrees difference uh, between the pony packs on the tray when it's just sitting on a heat mat. Whereas this, when it's all surrounded with air at the same temperature, and there's a fan in there circulating the air, mm -hmm. it keeps it all very consistent temperature, so you get a better uh, even more even germination of everything mm -hmm. and so this is my preference uh, preferred way of doing it uh just i don't have enough space to do it all that way right now i probably will eventually but right now i and don't it's easy to just open that up and then you just slide your trays right in and out. yeah this just opens like this yeah and you pull your trays yeah. in and out oh yeah it's cool it's kind of like a germination oven yeah yeah nice and like an incubator for seeds yeah. So that does that. Now for lighting. The biggest problem I see with people, they get these long 
leggy plants. They, they were always asking, what's wrong with my plants? They got them sitting in a south window or an east window in their house. And they say, what, what's wrong with my plants? And they're like uh, eight inches tall and they're about ready to fall over. And uh, they, they don't know what's going on. So we're going to fix that problem. Talk about lighting. So just like this little setup here, you can see how close this light is. And this is a really bright light. That's, you wouldn't want any further away than that for this kind of a light. Now, if you're doing these fluorescent fixtures, which a lot of people seem to still use, you want these things almost touching the plant. You want them right down, just right, right on the, right on the plant canopy almost, just so you don't burn them. You don't want them touching, but just right above it because they don't have enough light to make them grow properly. So, in that case, would you have to use one of these shorter covers over here? Uh, to get that close if you're going to well, recover on it? As soon as they start to germinate, you want to take this dome off. Gotcha. And so you can get them right down close to it. So as soon as the seeds germinate, whether or not you're using well, whatever style of light you're using, you're going to take the dome off because they don't need the humidity in there anymore. Yeah, they don't need the humidity anymore. And you, Good. you may have some that haven't germinated and come up out of the soil, but they've already started their process of germination. And if you just kind of watch it and just take your sprayer and uh, just... Give them a little spray, a little spritz, and keep that top layer, you know, moist. Mm -hmm. That'll help the ones that are lagging behind, you know, still come up all right. Mm -hmm. But you want to get that dome off so you can get the light right down close on these fluorescent tubes especially. Okay. These other ones, like the LED fixtures like this, you can, you can leave the dome on for right now. I mean, it doesn't hurt at all until the plants get a little bigger. Uh, it's close enough, and they'll, they'll do good. You can also use... This is one of my more favorite lights here. It's That's a nice looking light. A Viper Spectra 1000 has a Samsung LEDs in it. Put some links down in the description. Yeah, and it's got the, the dial here so you can dial it. Oh yeah. Whatever brightness you want. Yeah. Which is really nice. And if you put these too close, yeah, you're gonna fry your plants. You don't you don't want to have these very close in, in a by doing these, say you're doing these tomatoes right here, mm -hmm. you probably you probably want this light oh about a foot and a half above the canopy, 14 to 18 inches I'd say above the canopy, mm -hmm. and have this turned on 75 percent. 100 percent is just too bright. You're gonna have to have it way up too high, mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's kind of a, a good. 14, 18 inch, uh, inches above and 75%, and it says 75% right on the dial here. Mm -hmm. You can see right there, 75%, mm -hmm. 50, 25, 100. Yeah. And uh, these are very good light. Um, they seem to last a long time, and they're full spectrum, and they're not that expensive. They're like 70 bucks or so. Maybe you can get them on sale sometimes for about $60. So that's that's a good a good deal. Um, and then if you're using, you know, you you got a longer, maybe you're using one of the metal roll around racks you get at Costco and that's your plant stand. These work nicely because four foot covers, you know, quite a few, covers four trays. And uh, so is they, that a dedicated grow light? What's that? That's a dedicated grow light or is that just like a shop light? No, this is a dedicated grow light, full spectrum mm -hmm. grow light. Yeah. Okay. And these, we can put the link for these too. These, these have done very well for us as well. That's what you're using over there in the other? Uh, over, the, yeah, yeah, on that one setup. Not the one that's in the germination chamber, but the other one. Mm -hmm. So those work good and they have, they come with little cable adjustments that mm -hmm. you can adjust the height, you know, depending on where you're, you're hanging them. Um, these cables, see if I can figure out, remember how to do this. You push that little, push um, this little sleeve coupling down, and then yeah. you can just pull it up here and adjust your height, and then let go. It stays. It's a really handy little, neat little yeah system deal here. Adjust the height of them. Yeah. So if you keep those little rules in line in mind, you know, not you want to keep the fluorescent lights right down close to it and. 
Unless you're doing the T5s, those can those need to be up a little higher. Mm. Uh, these will probably be pretty similar to these uh, LED lights here. A little closer, but not a whole lot closer because you can burn your plants with these T5s. You're pretty bright. Mm -hmm. So if you got the old T12s that are an inch and a half diameter, you want those just so they're almost touching the plant, just barely keep them off the plant. And then these T8s, you can raise those up maybe four inches above the plant. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the LED lights and you'll be up there uh, 14, 18 inches or so for that. I think that pretty well covers what you need to know for lighting to have success, have a nice stocky plants. Mm -hmm. Another thing, you don't want it, the, uh, the canopy, the, the plant itself, you don't want it to uh, be in a real warm environment. You want it to, you really have the roots warm and then the top cool, and that'll help give you a, a stockier plant. Uh, if you have it too warm in the air, the, the plant will just grow too fast and it, it's just going to be kind of stringy and tall and leggy. So, so the point is to try to keep the roots warm, help them develop, but kind of yeah. slow down the stalk yeah, and stem growth. So that's why partly you would take off the canopy, one of the reasons you'd take yeah. it off. Yeah, take that off. That drop room. that air temperature. Yeah. And, and so it works good if you're like in a shop or garage where it's cool in there. You don't really keep that warm. Um, as long as you have a heat mat, you know, you can keep that set, whatever you want, and then just... Uh, Take the top off and keep it cool and keep the lights on and you'll have really nice and stocky. Some people say put an oscillating fan. That's totally unnecessary. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to do that if you got your room temperature right and your lighting right. Mm -hmm. I, I've never had a problem with nice stocky plants. So the reason you want the, a real stocky stem, uh, why are we aiming for a uh, real stocky stem? When stems? you go set them outside, you know, you get wind and rain mm -hmm. and all kinds of bad weather in the spring. So you want them to have some rigidity to be mm -hmm. kind of sturdy so they don't just fall over and blow over or kink or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Does it help it bear more fruit in the end versus starting real stringy and tall and leggy? Oh, that's another good point. Thanks for reminding me. Um, a lot of people, they leave them in the pots way too long. Uh, like the pony packs, they'll get them... You know, you go to the store and you, you see the pony packs and the plants are maybe six, eight inches tall. That's mm -hmm. way too big for a, a, a tomato plant in a pony pack. Mm. Uh, you need, you try to get the plants outside in the ground when they're three to four inches tall. And that's it. Don't let them get any bigger. And so they need to be nice and stocky at that size. Um, if you leave them in there longer, they're going to be root bound and it's going to, it's going to hinder their production down the road. You might think, yeah, it's, I like to have big plants when I set them out. Some people buy these plants at the store that have tomatoes set on them already, <laughs> and they're in a six or eight inch pot. Well, it's not, it's not going to work out good in the end. Uh, they're going to be very low production and late ripening. Uh, the ones that are on there when they buy them, you know, they might ripen early, but the rest of them be forever before they get ripe because it's going to slow down their production. So, yeah. Get the plants out soon. Don't don't grow them too big in the pots. Um, you can kind of see, you know, I'm just doing some of these fig starts, fig tree cuttings, and they've got a good root system, and they need to get into a bigger pot. And so I've got to get get those going. Um, those need to be repotted. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you get them out in the ground outside in their final resting spot when they're small. I think that pretty well covers the, the seed starting and the lighting and the heating. You get thermostats, the timers, soil. You refer to our other video on the soil seed start mix. Yeah, we should put a link up here in the top right of your screen. You should see one about now. Yeah. Well, that about wraps it up for that video. Hope you guys found that useful. If you did, leave us a comment down in the section below and give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, please. It helps our channel to grow and helps eventually to fund it. Uh, we also will put some affiliate links down below if you would kindly purchase some of the things that we talked about in this video there. That does help us because all this time I'm spending on putting these videos together is just time I'm donating basically at this point. So 
I really appreciate that, Dad and I. Eventually, hopefully, we, we may get a more slick way for you to get seeds and other gardening supplies. We're working on that. Until then, we'll see you next time. And remember, God, God is, is light, light and God, and God is, is love. love.